my main research interest is to understand what uh, makes uh, humans different from other creatures and especially other hominins that lived in the past. We have today only one species of human uh, living on Earth. All these humans have a, a recent common origin, but this situation is completely new at the scale of geological times. In the past, almost always, we had several uh, species, groups of hominins living on the planet. And it happened uh, two times in the past, uh, once about two million years ago, and again about 50,000 years ago, that one group outcompeted all the others. And we are one of these groups, the modern humans, and these modern humans expanded all over the planet, uh, starting about 100 to 50,000 years ago, and eventually colonized the whole planet. We want to understand what made them different from other hominins, and what is the reason for their demographic success and the fact that they replaced all these other hominins. To investigate the, the, the reasons uh, for this very successful expansion of modern humans, uh, we tend to concentrate on a, a, a special case, which is Western Eurasia, where Neanderthal, uh, Neanderthals lived uh, before the arrival of modern humans. And uh, why we focus on this area? Because we have a lot of information, we have a lot of sites, we have quite a lot of fossils of Neanderthals and early modern humans. The question is that uh, we don't know exactly why uh, one group uh, eventually replaced completely, almost completely, the other. And there are many possibilities. Uh, people came with uh, biological hypothesis. Uh, some others have supported that it's mostly demography that play a central role. Uh, others that, uh, in terms of technology, behavior, social organization, uh, modern humans were sort of superior, uh, and this could explain the, their success somehow. There are also some others who think that uh, environment and climate played a major role in uh, this uh, sort of dramatic transition uh, in Europe. And so it's important to investigate all these aspects and uh, to investigate the biology of the Neanderthals and early modern humans. We study the fossil remains of uh, these uh, groups uh, in terms of anatomy, of course, and we are very interested also in the development when we can in uh, demographic indicators. We also, of course, look on the behavioral side of the story, and this is mostly a, a matter of archaeology, working on their uh, dwellings, on their artifacts. And recently, uh, there is a new uh, domain that developed a lot, which is using molecular techniques to investigate both biology and behavior. And so we're interested in all sorts of things, uh, starting with DNA, uh, going on with uh, stable isotopes, and more recently with ancient proteins and things like that. And we try to understand uh, what was the biology of these groups and also what was their behavior. What we have found is that it's very unlikely that Neanderthals got extinct because of some natural causes. So in other words, it's very difficult to match uh, climatic changes or natural disasters uh, to the extinction of Neanderthals. And it's clearly the arrival of modern humans in Western Eurasia that led the Neanderthals to extinction. So we are the cause of the extinction of the Neanderthals. I think this is quite clear today. This being said, uh, this process of replacement was not a simple one. And what we have found, and this is a clear result, is that there was interactions between the two groups, uh, maybe not always very friendly <laughs> interactions, but we know that there is 
gene flow from one group to another. So there was some mating between Neanderthals and modern humans, uh, at least sometimes. And we also know that uh, the behavior of the last Neanderthals, after hundreds of thousand years of separate evolution, uh, have been altered by the arrival of modern humans. And we have cases where uh, we see the Neanderthals adopting uh, technique, behaviors that are brought into Eurasia by these African invaders. And this is something really fascinating. So probably one of the main results of the last few years is that uh, even if modern humans were the cause of the extinction of the Neanderthals, there is a certain level of assimilation of these uh, last Neanderthals by the invaders. And there's a complex and long story of several millennia in Europe where you have groups of Neanderthals, group of modern humans, maybe groups of hybrids of the two. Uh, and they have different type of cultures and behaviors. And we are just starting to uh, understand who did what and why. All these findings about the late Neanderthals and the early modern humans um, make our uh, views on the Neanderthals uh, changing a lot. In the past, we had a sort of uh, very simple uh, perception of the situation. So Neanderthals, they were primitive, they had very simple technologies, and they were outcompeted by modern humans coming into Europe and replacing them. The very fact that we have uh, these two groups uh, living in Europe, not together in the same region, but in different regions, for such a long time, several millennia, suggest that the superiority of modern humans was not so um, obvious somehow. And, and it took a long time, and it's a long process with uh, move, uh, movement back and forth and replacement of one group by another, but also admixture and diffusion of com behaviors from one group to another that tell us that uh, finally Neanderthals were more complex creatures that we had thought. They are very well adapted to their environment. And uh, to put it uh, maybe in a way a little bit blunt, they uh, resisted uh, rather well and rather a rather long time to this development of our species in, in uh, Western Eurasia. And I think this is uh, something that is somehow new uh, because we, we, we tended not to envision the Neanderthals as, uh, as complex as they were, in fact, in their capabilities, adaptability, uh, and, and the way they were able to uh, cope with the, not just the environment of uh, places in Europe, but also the presence of other hominins around. So we have opened some uh, windows uh, on this uh, remote past, and we have a couple of pictures, and we try to make sense of all these pictures. Uh, but truly, there is a lot of work still to be done, and we would like uh, to know in each part of Europe along this period from 50 to 40,000 years ago, what has been going on. And to do that, we still have to collect a lot of information. So there is, uh, for example, uh, a series of, of um, archaeological units, what we call techno complexes, for which we don't know exactly if they were made by Neanderthals or modern humans. And we want to, to know that because, of course, it will probably uh, make a clearer picture of what's going on. It's a bit frustrating to uh, ask these kind of questions because we, we don't have a lot of fossils of uh, human remains. So what people are doing now is trying to uh, approach this, this uh, problem a complete different way. So in the past, we have been waiting for new discoveries of spectacular uh, human fossils, for example. Now people are using other techniques. 
for example, to investigate all the small fragments of bones that are found by thousands in um, archaeological sites and from which we cannot really say much in terms of anatomy, but investigate, investigating uh, these large assemblages by molecular techniques, it's a way, A, to screen off human remains that has been so far invisible to our eyes, B, uh, determining whether there are Neanderthals or modern humans, and then extracting a wealth of information in terms of genetics, uh, paleoproteomics, uh, stable isotopes, all sorts of um, techniques who uh, give us information on the biology, the demography, and the behavior of these ancient hominins.